I'm going to start by uh, distinguishing what Nature Publishing Group's Lou Woodley and I previously referred to as closed and open uh, influence metrics and their relative value to an evidence-based marketer. Then we'll talk about a number of different useful Twitter metrics um, and uh, the tools that can help track them. Uh, next, any discussion of Facebook has to be rooted in an examination of the EdgeRank algorithm, uh, after which we'll look at various metrics and a case study in how you can use audience size to help with benchmarking. Uh, and lastly, we'll show you an example of how we use Twitter data at the University of Ottawa to uh, inform our online customer service in a uh, feedback mining experiment. So, um, um, online influence uh, in many ways can, uh, has been hijacked by cred and clout and many of the big names uh, as meaning uh, a specific kind of interactions or type of interactions. But of course, um, uh, as Gaffney and Pushman pointed out here, it's really uh, impossible for uh, us to effectively measure influence online in uh, using the current data that we have available to us, using clicks and, uh, and residence time on page. So uh, it's best measured in many ways by taking into consideration a wide range of metrics. Um, so at Science Online 2012, Lou Woodley and I laid out this distinction between the big names in influence measurement based principally on their relative transparency regarding their proprietary algorithms. Um, Whereas clout and peer index do not give any significant information about how their score is generated, CRED provides detailed tables assigning both outreach and influence point values for specific interactions on both Twitter and Facebook. Um, one major issue that, of course, you're going to encounter with all these metrics is that their integration of multiple social networking sites makes benchmarking impossible. How can you tell the relative contribution of each, each network if you have someone else that uh, uh, you're trying to compare yourself against it has multiple networks integrated, of course, the, the data is, uh, can't be compared effectively. So all this being said, CRED's much more transparent scoring system and the fact that most organizational accounts are only measured based on their Twitter interactions makes it a much better metric. Uh, that being said, this also makes it more gameable and their long-term data scan rewards seniority. So they have 1,000 days of data that they claim they use in the CRED score. And uh, effectively, by existing for a longer period of time and contributing more, your score uh, could be considered higher when really that's not an effective measurement of, of influence. Uh, and also, um, it, it's very gameable since the metric is transparent. Um, you get a point every time on Twitter, for instance, that you follow someone, uh, an outreach point, and you get one influence point anytime someone uh, follows you back. So they've got two separate uh, uh, point contributors there for their system. Um, but neither is an ideal solution at the end of the day. I think competition in this area is going to facilitate more accessible data and more transparent influence metrics, but we're not there yet. And using these as your benchmarking uh, uh, tools is not a, a good strategy in the long run, at least not yet. Um, so if we're looking at uh, Twitter for some of the basic metrics available to us, uh, retransmission and interaction um, as, as retweets and favorites are very important to look at. While there are many subscription-based software, softwares with often uh, uh, significant associated fees, I'm going to try to focus on the free options here for you, and uh, you can go on in your spare time and pick out the more expensive ones if you're headed down that direction. Keyhole is a great freemium option that I'm using right now for this conference, actually. If you go to my Twitter feed, you'll notice I tweeted the link to it earlier, and uh, it's live tracking the number of tweets and uh, uh, um, the air area people are coming from. Um, so it's really useful for, for tracking that data. Um, uh, also, Clout and Topsy offer the ability to look at individual pieces of mostly recent content, but they have no data exportability, whereas Keyhole allows you to do a complete CSV download. Um, audience size as a measure of number of followers and number of accounts followed, as well as the number of lists that include your account, is a useful way of gauging uh, community growth. And I really recommend Twit Sprouts. They're a Canadian startup as well as Keyhole. That, that one's in Toronto. Um, both uh, Twit Sprouts freemium service, but Twitter counter um, it is great uh, because it provides you the CSV data down here that you're seeing at the bottom of the slide. And um, Twitter counter provides similar data, but you can't do the export if you're not a paying member. And uh, it has to be updated manually. So in terms of outreach and activity or how much you're contributing to a network, uh, Twitter's CEO, Dick Costello, re reported recently that users would begin to receive the ability to download their own tweets. 
And if you're lucky enough to have access to this feature already, I'm, I'm very jealous because I don't on any account that I have. But I know a number of people who do. And the next best option would be to use um, uh, or to get a measurement of tweets over time using Twitsprout, which has the total number of tweets uh, that you've sent on any particular day. Twitter counter is another option, again, not as exportable, or a specific keyword associated track on keyhole.co would be one option. You may have seen that some organizations will indicate which operator is replying on an account by placing the initials at the end of a reply tweet. There you can see a, uh, the little uh, exponential symbol at the top there, the hat, and followed by the X, Y. Um, uh, this is uh, useful not only for indicating to people that um, you have people behind the responses, that this is not just a brand, but it's composed of individuals. Uh, but also, it's an excellent marking method for your tweets to begin determining how many outreach tweets and how much work your individual operators are doing if you have multiple operators. So um, once you've downloaded all these tweets, you can use online-utility.org or other text mining software, and you can count the number of uses, and that'll give you an idea of how much work you're doing within your community, how much outreach you're doing. Um, uh, this can be done much more crudely with, I'm, I'm surprised how, how little known this tool is, snapbird.org. It's a great search tool that allows you to go back the last 3,200 tweets on any account in about 30 seconds. But of course, you have to copy and paste everything from that. So it's certainly not ideal. Um, uh, looking at audience and conversation, Follower Wonk uh, provides a great tool. They're part of the SEO Moz family. Um, that mines the profiles of different Twitter users followed by or following a particular account. Uh, this can be a great way to assess your audience, although it's important to note that the data for gender and even language cannot be considered reliable since these are usually inferred using keyword, match, keyword matching. So the word clouds and additional stats are, are useful for guiding strategy, though. Um, other uh, choices, uh, if you've got CSV or Excel data from tweets, um, uh, surrounding a particular keyword, you can look at visualizing the network within tools such as Gephi, but that's going to require some basic knowledge of Java. So if you're not uh, into code, uh, I really recommend Dalhousie's uh, Professor Anatoly Grusht at socialmedialab.ca. Um, his tool, netlytic.org, uh, uh, allows you to import files from Google Drive for visualization. It's a great, easy-to-use interface, has text analysis and keyword use visualization tools, so I strongly recommend you check that out. Now, looking over at Facebook, um, uh, in terms of negative fee, uh, feedback uh, and ed, uh, edge rank, um, if we look at, um, I'm sure many of you are familiar with the edge rank algorithm, which is composed of three, although more recently four, contributing factors that are at least public knowledge. The probability that any user will see an individual story in their newsfeed is related to how recently that content was shared, time decay. The number of interactions, individual comments, likes, tags, et cetera, uh, that's the weight. And the affinity score, which is a value based on the frequency of previous interactions with the creator of a particular story. So the fourth contributor revealed more recently was negative feedback. Uh, that includes hides, unsubscribes, unlikes, which also serve to decrease the probability that a piece of content will be seen by other users, not only the user who's being negative. Uh, as a general rule of thumb, um, pictures perform better, uh, statuses succeed, links are lackluster. Um, as you can see here, EdgeRank Checker has done some more detailed research, but one com important conclusion for any community manager is that um, if you share content with a poor impression to interaction ratio, you're decreasing the affinity score for all those users that didn't create a story or interact with your content. So uh, an excellent solution to better manage your attention stockpiles then, which is effectively your marketing budget if you think about it, is to take advantage of Facebook's newsfeed targeting feature, which provides a number of different filtering options to help you hit your audience. So here's just a simple experiment I did with very rough data where I drew uh, uh, manually this data by visiting McGill and UBC's Facebook pages. And I wanted to demonstrate one method you can use to facilitate benchmarking with differently sized pages. So McGill has about 30,000 fans, UOttawa has about 14,000, and UBC uh, has around uh, 28,000. And it's worth noting that only UOttawa and UBC had their walls open for posting at the time when I drew the data, which is why there's no data for McGill. Um, so if we look at benchmarking by fan base normalization, um, those of you who have taken a look into Facebook Insights might have noticed the virality score, which is the number of people who have interacted with a post as a fraction of the, the virality, uh, sorry, as a fraction of the total number of people who it's reached. That's an ideal metric for comparing between pages, but of course, since that data is not always available without admin access, normalizing by audience size is a more effective way to go. So for the data here, for all the McGill and UBC posts, only data from publicly broadcast posts was used, since that's all I had access to. 
For Uottawa, I use the targeted to projected reach number, which you get when you start to target something, which tells you the total of number of fans you might hit. Um, and there was data that was publicly broadcast, which I used for Uottawa, the total number of fans to normalize. So um, when we do the normalization, you'll notice the numbers come out fairly differently here. Uottawa comes out um, uh, at the top with average likes, and I've made this a percentage by multiplying. Um, and, and you'll notice also that we come out on the top in terms of average comments and median comments as well. So uh, uh, what this certainly might indicate is that um, uh, the number of fans a page has is a useless metric besides the average reach of that page relative to the total number of fans. And uh, one might predict the pages that display a higher normalized rate of interactions would ensure a greater proportion of their total audience receives their messaging on a regular basis, effectively augmenting your marketing budget. So, and lastly, here's an example of something we did with Twitter. Um, we drew a whole bunch of data uh, manually from People Browser, which again, you can go back and search the last 1,000 days of tweets. They've got a complete data store there, and they allow you to generate graphs and look at individual tweets on specific days, uh, all the way back to 2011. So we drew 2,700 tweets between September and May of 2011 to 2012, and worked to sort them into broad categories. Most of them were impossible to categorize due to Twitter's character length restriction and the effect that this has on, on feedback reporting, obviously. It's tough to be, to be accurate in, in 140 characters. But from what we did manage to sort out here, are the big categories. So the regular themes were the library, and this was not really service related. It was principally students often commenting about each other's activities during traffic heavy periods of the year. So uh, 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 specific uh, instances of other students eating in the library or talking too loudly, and essentially in environmental uh, 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 things were going on there. And um, also there was general commentary about software and tools used by our community. And many of the other categories of feedback lacked consistent themes between the tweets, which is why we tried to keep the category so broad. But it did provide us with a broad range of material to inform our strategy going forward, which was important to us since we're using uh, Twitter uh, very regularly for reaching out and listening to our community. So to, to finish up here, I'd like to recommend uh, users should embrace metrics that can be recorded manually in case something goes wrong. Uh, both open and closed metrics are, are untrustworthy for benchmarking, as we think of uh, the, the big names in influence metrics now, peer index, cloud cred. But if you need to use them, prefer open. Prefer something like cred, although it may not be in, around for a while because it's in litigation with Twitter right now. Um, when you're building your content strategy, make sure you build room for it to get dynamic. Any content providers need to be made aware of their impact of the content on social media so they can work to improve it. Uh, collaborations for data sharing are a really great way to set up a good benchmark. Uh, normalizing by audience size is an excellent way to help uh, off-scale comparisons, but again, uh, virality is a better measure uh, via the Facebook insights. And Twitter keyword archives are also an excellent way to guide customer service strategy and text analysis tools will help you te tease out the important times of year when particular issues uh, tend to pop up. 